Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, welcome to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University Mathura. Let us talk about this lecture 1 of managerial economics. First we will talk about the topics what we are going to discuss in this session. The very first topic will help you to understand about economics, what economics is, what is the relative importance of studying economics, why do we need economics to study. So all this we are going to start with. Secondly, we will talk about economic assumption. Economic assumptions are basically the assumptions which we need to make for study the relative concept of economics because the concept, the theory, some laws are there which are based on certain assumption and without making those assumptions we would not be able to apply those laws and theories. So what are those basic assumptions that we will study? Thereafter we will talk about economic analysis. Here in this we are going to talk about micro and macro analysis which is very important for us to understand because economics is particularly divided into two broad areas microeconomics and macroeconomics. Secondly, we will talk about short run and long run analysis. Third, we will discuss about partial and general equilibrium analysis. And lastly, here we are going to talk about positive and normative analysis. So these are the four broad categories of analysis which we are going to understand in this economic analysis. Thereafter, we will talk about economic decisions. These are the decisions which help you to understand what to produce, when to produce, how to produce, are the economies uh, used economically, is the economy growing or not. So all these questions are going to be discussed here under the economic decisions. Thereafter we will talk about managerial economics. Initially we have taken the glimpse of economics. Now we will talk about the subject matter of managerial economics. How are we going to apply? the consideration of economics into the managerial aspect so that we would be able to make a better decisions in the organization. Thereafter, we will talk about the relationship of managerial economics with decision sciences. Here you will be able to understand the applicable tools and analysis which are being applied into the economics for better decision making as well as forward planning. And lastly in this we are going to talk about the concept of scarcity which you can also understand this is the main problem for which we are talking about economics right. Scarcity is one of the important reason to understand why we are studying about economics and how we can optimally utilize our resources. So these are the contents which we are going to cover in our first lecture. Let us look at the learning objectives. What are you going to learn after this lecture? So first of all you are going to get the key economic concept like I said you will get to know about the concept of scarcity, what is meant by rationality as this is one of the economic assumption which we make into economics and we will also talk about the equilibrium. Equilibrium is basically the state of balance. Then secondly you will be able to understand the difference between the micro and macro economics you will get to know the difference between positive and normative analysis, what is meant by the short period, what is the long run period considered in the economics and we will also talk about partial and general equilibrium analysis. This particular lecture will help you to understand how decisions are made about what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. Here in this you will be able to understand the definition of managerial economics, how do we define it, what are the different views which are being given by different authors for managerial economics and its relative importance in managerial decision making. And lastly in this we will be able to discuss the relationship between the managerial economics with the discipline and functional areas. 
So, these will be all learnings from this lecture. So, let us start the very first lecture where we are going to talk about economics. In the words of John Robinson, the purpose of studying economics is not to acquire a set of ready made answers to economic questions, but to avoid being deceived by economists. So, basically with this what we are trying to tell is whatever we are going to study in economics is not going to give you any ready made solutions to the problem. It is basically helping you to develop that analytical skills right, which will help you to understand the concepts in a manner where you can understand how things happen. You would not be deceived by any person means you would not believe them anyway whatever they are saying, but you will be able to understand them, analyze them and then you will be able to apply them. So, that is the purpose of studying economics. So, let us move to the subject where we are going to understand what is economics, right? what economics is all about. Usually whenever we hear this term, we always see that uh, it is related to demand and supply or economics is related to money, how people earn money, how big business houses are making money, but the answer to this question is actually no. Right, economics is not just demand and supply and here we not always talk about money. Economics is more than that, right. Economics is something which is important for every one of us. Every person in the economy needs to study economics because it is the subject which help us to make choices, right. How we can utilize our limited resources in a manner we would be able to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. I will give you a few example to make you understand the importance of studying economics. Even a small child who is having a hundred rupees with him, right? he must be having different wishes. Maybe he want to buy a drawing book, he want to buy a toy, he want to eat an ice cream, but he cannot do everything with the limited money he is having with him. right? So, he has to make a choice what he is going to purchase or what he is going to buy and how he is going to distribute his money in the manner so that he would be able to satisfy his maximum need and want. A person who is doing a job, right, he received his first month salary, right, he has to make a choice whether to buy a new mobile phone or to buy a laptop, right. So, both the things cannot go simultaneously if the amount is limited, okay. Even a housewife, right, even a housewife has to make a choice if there is a water supply for 2 hours. So, she has to make a choice whether to use this water right now for cleaning or for washing or the different purposes for which we are using the water in the house. So, economics is something which is relevant to each and every one of us because it is about the choices which we need to make and how optimally we are going to allocate our resources in the choices we are having or the alternatives we are having so as to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. So, first of all what we are saying is economics is a branch of social science that studies how people interact with value, right. So, this is the example, the examples which I have given you will help you to understand how people are interacting with value and how are they behaving because of the limited resources and everything which we are buying has a value. So, how people behave and interact with the value is the one thing which they are going to understand in economics. It teaches you about the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services, right. As because we are going to discuss about how goods are being produced, what to produce and how to produce, how are we going to distribute them and how the people are going to consume those goods and services. So, this is what we are going to cover in economics. It also explores how economies work, right? what is the pattern in which the economies are working and their behavior, interaction of people, companies as well as organization. If you look at the bigger picture of economy, this subject will help you to understand the interaction of various sectors. right? Usually our economy is divided into four sectors, we have households, the people who are living together like you and me. Right. On the other hand, we have firms, so we interact with each other. Firms needs goods and services for the production of goods and services, they require factors of production. So, who is going to provide them factors of production? We people provide services to the firms in the form of land, labor, capital, entrepreneur and for providing these services, organization and firms pays us 
salaries, they pay us rent, they pay us interest on the capital and profit to the entrepreneur. So, the kind of interaction is being taken place between the firm and the household and the income which we are getting, we buy goods and services and this we called as a consumption expenditure. The interaction between the households and the government, the interaction between the government and the organization and how are we are interacting with the foreign nation, right. So, this whole economic situation will be able to understand how economic uh, economies work and how people are interacting with each other that is what we study under this subject. It also looks how nation, individuals, government and businesses make decisions regarding the economic resources and allocation. This we have already talked about since we have scarcity of resources. So, this becomes our responsibility to see how we are allocating these scarce resources. So, as we would be able to get maximum out of it, right. So, how individuals, how nations, how governments are going to allocate these limited resources. So, that maximum uh, you know welfare can be taken up. Let us move to the next part. If we look at this word economics, we can say that economics uh, arrived from two words which means okios and nomos, right. Okios means the people, households, right. Whereas, nomos are the laws, right. So, this basically subject tells us about how the laws of the people work in the economy, right and it is the study of people and choices like I said where wants are unlimited and resources are limited. So, this is the basic thing which evolves around the economics where we are going to understand how we are going to utilize our unlimited wants with these limited resources so that the maximum satisfaction can be taken care of. Now, the question comes why economics? What economics is, is clear to every one of us. Now, why we are studying this subject? Initially, I said that economics is one thing which will help you to understand things better, right. So, firstly, we are saying as because this is the study of society. Here, we are studying about the human behavior, how people interact with each other, how they are spending their, uh, you know, resources in the allocation and the allocation of resources. So, this is something which is very important for us to study how economy behaves, how people behave since the study of economics related to the society. So, it becomes important for us to study it. Secondly, it also trains the mind of an individual and it enables them to think systematically about the problems of businesses as well as wealth. So, this is one subject which is again important because it is related to the economy, business wealth as well as nation. So, it enables us to think in that manner and think systematically. And from the subject of the study, it is possible to predict economic trends with some precision. Whatever the trends are being taken up in the economy, right, there are different changes which takes up. I will let, uh, later on discuss in my further classes about business cycle, the changes which are taking place in the economy, right. So, with those precisions, you would be able to uh, you know understand the changes taking place in the economy and you can incorporate those things in advance and for the betterment of your organization as well as for the country, right. And lastly, it also helps one to choose from various economic alternative. So, whatever the alternatives we are having, we can make the best decisions out of those available alternatives if we have studied the subject carefully and we have understood the aspects which will uh, where we will be able to get a maximum satisfaction. Now, let us look at some definitions given by economists how they define what economics is. The first definition is given by G. B. Shaw and he says that economics is the art of making the most of life. By looking at this definition only you can understand how we are going to apply the concept of economics in the manner where we are going to get the maximum out of life uh, with, with the minimum resources, right. So, this is one thing which we are going to understand for sure, how we are going to allocate our limited income or the limited resources to get the maximum out of it. Second definition is given by Adam Smith who is also hailed as the father of economics. In his words, it is an inquiry into the nature and it is the cause of wealth of nation, right. 
So, whatever is there you inquire it, you understand this what is available and how you are going to create wealth out of it, it is what economics is going to make you understand. In the words of Alfred Marshall, the study of mankind in everyday business of life, here you are studying about the mankind, right? basic people you are studying about and how they are behaving, how they are interacting. So, all these things you will be able to understand with the study of economics. And in the words of Robbins, the science which studies human behavior between and scare means which have alternative uses. So, again in the words of Robbins, they are telling you that economics helps you to understand how you are going to allocate your resources with the available alternative, so that you will be able to understand and get the maximum out of it. Now, this is very important for you to understand the definition given by Keynes. According to Keynes, the theory of economics does not furnish a body of a settled conclusions immediately, which is applicable to any policy. Rather, it is a method, right? Uh, you know, it is a method rather than a doctrine, an apparatus of the mind, a technique of thinking, which help the processor to draw correct conclusion, right? So, economics is not going to give you any ready-made solution to any problem. If you have any problem, if you think that we will apply this law, if you apply this policy of economics and definitely we will get the solution, it is not like that. Study of economics will help you to uh, bring that understanding, right. What we are saying, it is a method rather than a uh, doctrine, right. It is not a subject, it is basically a method. It is an apparatus of mind where you are applying your mind and you are also thinking of a technique which you can apply to that problem and then you would be able to take out the solutions of those problem rather than directly getting the solution of any problem. So, understanding this definition given by Keynes, you can say that it will help you to enhance your analytical skills as well as analyzing things better where you will definitely get the problems of your solutions. Now, let us talk about the economic assumption. Like I said, economics is uh, based on certain theories, it is based on certain laws, right? And those laws cannot be studied without making certain assumptions, right? To make them applicable, we have to assume certain things. So, here we are going to talk about two assumptions one is citrus parables, and the other one is rationality. Now, what is citrus parables? If we, uh, this is basically a uh, Latin phrase, citrus parables is a Latin phrase, if we convert it into English, it means all other things being equal, right. So, uh, what does that mean, all other things being equal, we are assuming the other things to be equal for a point of time. Let me explain it to you more clearly, as you can see that uh, demand, right, we can see that demand of a product is being affected by various things. It could be the price of the commodity, right. Suppose, if you are talking about the demands of commodity X, so price of a commodity X is going to affect it, right. Price of related goods will also affect the demand of this commodity. Related goods can be the substitute goods or can be the complementary goods. Demand of commodity X can be affected by taste and preference of the consumer. Right, it can be affected by the income of the consumers, right. Demand can be affected by the advertisement of the product, it can be affected by the price, future expectation, right, future expectations regarding the price or income of the consumer. So, as you can see, the demand of a commodity can be affected by various things, right. Now, my uh, thing which I am going to explain you right now is about citrus parable. Suppose, I want to understand the commodity X on the demand of the commodity X. What demand uh, means what change has been taken place in the demand of a commodity X because of change in the price of commodity X. This is the only effect I want to study, right. Being demand is a dependent variable and all of these are the independent variables. So, what I need to assume in this situation? I need to assume this variable, this variable, this and this variable constant for a period of time. I am assuming this situation that as of now, there is no change in the price of related goods, taste and preference of the consumer, income of the consumer, advertisement as well as the future expectations of the consumer. I have assumed them to be constant for a period of time 
and I am just studying the effect of price of commodity X on the demand of commodity X. So, that is that will be possible only if I assume other factors to be constant right which is uh, call, so called as law of demand right law of demand studies the change in the price of a commodity on the demand of a commodity keeping other factors to be constant. So, this is one assumptions which we are making to the study of this law which is called as citrus paribus right. I hope it is clear to every one of you and the other one is rationality. Now, rationality is what? Rationality is already been assumed by the economists that consumers as well as the producers behave rationally. Right. Rationality means we are always analyzing the cost as well as the benefit before making any decision any person rather whether the person act as a consumer or as a producer because everything involves cost right. Nothing comes for free. So, whatever you are doing if you are going outside to have your dinner then also you are analyzing where you are going to have your dinner tonight right where are you going to get the value for your money right. So, whatever you are doing in your life you always analyze the cost and benefits and definitely you will make that choice where you will be getting be, uh, you know benefits more than the cost. So, this has already been assumed by the uh, uh, economists that we all behave rationally. So, these are the two basic assumptions we talk here in economics. Let us move to the next topic we are going to talk about economic analysis. Like I said here we are going to discuss about four analysis one is your micro and macro analysis then we will talk about positive and normative analysis, short run and long run analysis, partial and general equilibrium analysis. So, let us start with the micro and macro. The word micro means small right. So, micro means small and here in this microeconomics we study the smaller picture of the economy. Here we talk about individuals, how individuals behave, what is the price of a individual commodity, we study things in particular basically if we talk about microeconomics. Whereas, in macroeconomics we study about the economy as a whole because macro means large. So, here we are looking at the bigger picture, we talk about aggregates, we talk about total demand in the economy, national income, we talk about GDP right. So, these are the topics which are being covered under this macroeconomics right. So, microeconomics where we are dealing with the things in particular at a smaller level whereas, at macroeconomics we are talking about the things at the larger scale. So, what has been said by Paul Samuelson? If you read one branch of economics carefully, but ignore the other, you will be half educated. Where we are trying to say that being a different uh, branch of economics, we have micro as well as macroeconomics, they both are not uh, you know substitute of each other rather they are complementary right. So, it is again very important for us to understand about both the aspects of economy, how things work at the smaller level and what will be their effect at the larger scale. So, let us look at the uh, difference between micro and macroeconomics more clearly. In microeconomics we are more focused on the individuals market like I said right we are dealing with the things at individual level whereas, in macroeconomics we are concerned with the whole economy right. Here in micro we see what has been produced by an individual firm, what is the demand of a product in an individual market whereas, in GDP is the gross domestic product right, the total production taken place in the economy. So, that is what has been studied under macroeconomics. Under microeconomics we are studying the effect of price of a good right of a single commodity what is the effect of price uh, on a single commodity that effect we study in microeconomics just what I have explained you like law of demand which is specifically talking about the price of commodity X on the demand of commodity X. Whereas in macroeconomics we are talking about inflation the general price level inflation is the increase in the prices right whenever the price of goods increases in the economy we call it as an inflation. So, at larger scale we are talking about at macroeconomics. Here in microeconomics we are discussing the individual labor demand what will be the demand of a labor market uh, you know at individual level whereas, here we are concerned with the total employment and unemployment rate right. Unemployed are those people who are looking for the jobs, but not getting the job right who are searching for it, but the economy is not 
able to provide them the job that situation is called as unemployed situation. Under the microeconomics we are concerned with the individual consumer behavior how individual consumer is behaving whereas at macroeconomics we are talking about the aggregate demand the demand of all the people in the economy is being considered under macroeconomics. And lastly we are saying in microeconomics we are concerned with the supply of an individual good whereas at macro level we are talking about the production capacity of the economy right how much we can produce within the economy. So, that is uh, being discussed under macroeconomics. So, let us move to the second part where we are going to discuss about positive and normative analysis. Look at the work we are talking about normative not negative. So, do not get confused between positive and negative it is normative. Now, what is positive analysis? Positive analysis is where we are going to understand the things what they are. So, it is basically going to establish the relationship between the cause and effect right. It focuses on what is, what is there is positive, what ought to be is normative right. So, in economics uh, what matter is? If we are talking about the facts, if we are talking about what is there, like I will give you an example to make it more clear. The distribution of income in India is not equal. So, this is the fact, right? So, it is there and this is very much true that the distribution of income in India is not equal. But if we talk about the normative analysis, we will frame this subject in the manner that distribution of income in India should be equal. Right, this is one value judgment which I have added to the statement that the distribution of income in India is not equal. What should be? It should be equal, right. So, in normative analysis, we add some value judgment to the facts. Whatever is there, we try to add something to it, we give our value judgment to it. So, it is concerned with the question of involving value judgment. What ought to be? What can be there? And one thing which we need to understand here is this involves some degree of value judgment and this cannot be verified by the law. Like this is my judgment, this is my opinion which I am giving. Your opinion might be different from mine. So, we cannot uh, you know verify each other. We cannot say that you are right or I am wrong or I cannot say I am right and you are wrong. This is our opinion, this is our own value which we are adding to the statement, right. So, positive analysis is going to analyze the things what they are in actual or what is fact by the nature whereas, in normative analysis we analyze the things by adding some opinion or judgments to it. Moving to the third part we have short run and long run analysis. In economics you will understand the difference between the short run as well as in the long run and there is no specified period which could be called as short run or as a long run. But what you can understand here is short run is a period which is not enough for the producer as well as for the consumer to adjust to any new situation, right. Whereas, long run is a planning horizon where you can plan out your activities, you can completely change your situations. In economics you will find that difference because in short run we have two types of uh, factors, one are fixed factors and others are variable factors, right. So, you can only change the variable factors to change the size of uh, you know output whereas, fixed factors will remain fixed. Whereas, in long run all the variables are uh, all the factors are variable there is no fixed factor. So, they can be changed in the long run right. So, for short run and long run there are two periods which are being considered in the economics short run where we are not having enough time to adjust to the new situation whereas, long run where we can plan out our activities and we can change our situation. So, this is what you need to understand between short run as well as in the long run. And then last we have partial and general equilibrium analysis. Let us first understand the meaning of this word equilibrium balance. The state of balance is called as equilibrium right. When we have demand and supply, the price of uh, the economy is said to be in equilibrium when demand is equal to the supply, ok. So, that state of balance has been considered as an equilibrium. Now, what is meant by partial and general equilibrium? Partial is basically that study where we are going to study the impact of one policy, ok. Impact of one policy or change in impact of change in one policy on uh, into the market which, market which is directly associated with it, right. I will again give you one example to make it more clear. 
suppose if there is a change in the price of a fuel okay if the price of fuels changes then it will impact most to the automobile industry right the demand of cars will be affected because of the change in the price of fuel so if we are uh, studying this much only right what impact will be there because of change in the price of the fuel what impact will be there in the automobile industry then this study would be called as partial equilibrium study right where we internalize the outcome of any policy in a single market which is directly associated to it so that study would be a partial equilibrium study whereas we can look at the broader picture of this economy the price of fuel will not only impact the automobile industry it will have impact on various other uh, areas as well right the transportation cost will increase when transportation cost will increase the price of goods will also increase the employees in uh, you know may demand for the higher conveyance allowance from their employers so there are lot many impacts which can take up because of change in the price of the fuel right so if we are covering each and every aspect of it general equilibrium analysis explain the phenomenon in economy as a whole right so here we are going to study the impact of one policy or one decision on all the areas where it has impacted so that kind of study would come under the general equilibrium analysis whereas in partial equilibrium analysis we are going to study the impact of one decision only into one area right uh, you can say that that market is directly associated to it moving ahead we have economic decisions like i said in economics there are different uh, decisions there are different problems which we need to make the first is what to produce this is the first and the foremost question which comes in the economics like what to produce right what will be the uh, product which we should produce whether we should go for a capital good or a consumer goods right so you need to make a choice what product are you going to produce then comes the question how to produce what are the resources which you are going to use whether it is a, uh, you know you can use it with a labor intensive or a capital intensive unit can be there how are you going to you know uh, reduce your cost what should be your production process so what to produce how to produce for whom to produce here you are going to decide your customer right for whom you are going to produce the target audience okay and are the resources used economically because this is a very important thing whatever the resources we are having we have them in a scarcity so we have to use them and utilize them economically so these four questions are of fundamental problems and that comes to the microeconomics aspect because here we are talking about the things in a specific aspects where we are focusing on the individual aspect of a person uh, from the uh, view point of a producer what to produce how to produce for whom to produce and are we using those resources economically or not whereas we have two most important macroeconomic problems also are the resources fully employed right whatever the resources we are having in the economy we are talking about the full employment because if we are not able to provide employment to the people of our economy then definitely we are wasting our resources so are we able to employ them fully is the economy growing right and applying those uh, you know full employment to the people are we able to uh, get the growth for the economy or not that we have to study right so economy is growing or not that is again a very important aspect to see because whatever the uh, you know efforts we are putting if we are not able to get the growth for the economy all those efforts will go waste right so that has to be taken care of so these two are the uh, macroeconomic problems because we are focusing on the larger picture of the economy whereas the other few uh, other four questions are of micro nature where we are talking about what to produce how to produce for whom to produce and are we uh, using those resources economically or not so these are your fundamental problems which comes under the economics and economics helps you to provide the solutions of those uh, problems now let us talk about managerial economics since far we have studied about what is economics what is the purpose of studying economics what assumptions we make in economics now we are going to study about managerial economics managerial economics is basically that part of economics where we are going to apply the economics tools and concepts to the management decision making management is what managerial managerial is basically 
the skill of a manager right how they are going to plan, plan out their activities like planning man if we talk about the managerial functions what are managerial functions like planning organizing staffing directing controlling leadership these are all managerial functions so when we talk about managerial economics we are applying the concepts of economics into the management for the better decision making as well as forward planning so managerial economics is a means to an end to manager uh, to managers in any business in terms of finding the most efficient way of allocating scarce organizational resources and reaching stated objective so what is the job of a manager job of a manager is to achieve the goal to achieve the objective of the organization with the available resources so managerial economics will help you to you know allocate the available resources in a manner where you would be able to attain the stated objective of the organization managerial economics is a discipline that combines the economic theory with the managerial practice or management practice right so you are applying the concept of economics into the management practices for better understanding of your businesses the subject offer powerful tools and techniques for managerial policy making an integration of economic theory and tools of decision sciences which works successfully in optimal decision making in face of constraint if there is any constraint if there is any problem you would be able to get the solution of this problem like i earlier said economics helps you to increase your analytical skills where you would be able to focus on your problem and you will be able to find out the best possible solution to that problem and lastly we are saying a study of managerial economics also enrich the analytical skills it helps in logical structuring of the problem and it help you to provide adequate solutions to the economic problem so this is what managerial economics is here are the few definitions given for managerial economics the very first definition is in, uh, given by mansfield in his words managerial economics is concerned with the application of economic concepts and economic analysis to the problem of formulating rational decision making so you can apply the economic concepts economic tools and techniques if you have a problem to get a solution like there is a problem in the business right and to get the optimal solution you are applying the economic tools and techniques right so this is how you will be able to get the solution of those problems by applying tools and technique of economics in the words of nayer and mariam managerial economics is the use of economic modes of thoughts to analyze business situation right it will give you a better understanding to understand and to analyze your business solutions uh, situations and to get a solution of those problem in the words of douglas managerial economics is concerned with the application of economic principles and methodologies to the decision making process within the firm or organization under the conditions of uncertainty you know what uncertainty is uncertainty is something which you cannot predict in advance right there is a difference between risk and uncertainty risk is something which you can calculate in advance right whereas uncertainty is something which we cannot predict in advance so business has uh, concerned with the risk as well as uncertainty and profit is also a reward for uncertainty right so how well you are able to manage those uncertain situation how you are going to integrate the problems of your business with the economic tools and technique so that you would be able to uh, you know get the profit for your business in the words of spencer and sigelman it is the integration of economic theory with the business practices for the purpose of facilitating decision making and forward planning by the management so these are the two important things which are been taken up by the management one is decision making and the other one is forward planning and this decision making and forward planning can only be taken up with the integration of economic tools and techniques if you are clear with each and every aspect of the things you would definitely be able to make a better decisions and you can able to plan out your activities in a uh, right manner and in the words of hailstone and rothwell managerial economics is the application of economic theory analyzed to practice of business firms and other institution so if we we'll combine all these uh, you know 
definitions all together and we summarize it. So, we can say that managerial economics is basically the integration of economic tools and techniques to the business problems where we would be able to get the optimal solutions, where we would be able to make the right decisions, where we would be able to plan out better for our business organization. right? So, this is how we understand what managerial economics is. Now, let us look at the relationship of managerial economics with decision sciences. Decision sciences basically provides the tools and techniques of analysis used in managerial economics. The definitions which we have talked previously, how we are going to uh, you know integrate the economic tools and techniques into the business problems to get the optimal solution. The decision sciences provide us those tools and techniques. The theory of managerial economics largely utilizes the tools of mathematics as well as econometrics. In many of the situations, we are applying those mathematical and econometric, uh, you know, situations so as we would be able to understand the things better and to analyze them better, so get the solution of those problem. And the most important aspect of decision science that are used in managerial economics includes numerical and algebraic analysis, optimization, statistical estimation as well as forecasting. So, these are the uh, you know tools and the aspects which are provided by the decision sciences. If you look at this interaction, the things will be more clear to you. Here we have economic theory, we have quantitative analysis and we can see the role of managerial economics to provide the optimal solution to managerial decision making. So, first in the economic theory, we have microeconomics as well as macroeconomics. Here in the microeconomics, we will talk about the theory of firm. The theory of firms will help you to understand the basic behavior of the firms, how firms interact and how the firms behave. Here we will also talk about the consumer behavior because we are talking about people, how consumer behave, how are they making their choices and the choices based on the utility, right? What utility are they going to get, right? So, how are we going to calculate and measure this utility by the way of cardinal and ordinal aspects which we are going to discuss in our further lectures. We will talk about cost and production theory, okay, what to produce and how to produce, how we are going to produce them, right, keeping the short run as well as long run, uh, long run consideration about the cost theories, the different kind of cost which are being involved in the business decision making, right. So, all these things are being taken up. Then we will talk about the price theory, how we are going to keep up the prices for the commodity, price determination, because there are different strategies also to keep the different uh, prices for the commodity, keeping into consideration the different market situations, right. Whereas, in macroeconomics, we will talk about national income, the total income of the economy, how do we calculate it, what is meant by GDP, GNP, GDP is your gross domestic product. GNP is your gross national product. Here we will also talk about per capita income, right? How we measure this national income. There are different ways of measuring this national income. It can be measured by the product or output method, income method or employment method. So, these are the different details which we are going to study under the heading of national income. And then we have business cycle, right? The business cycle is basically the cycle which keeps on going, right? Cycle is the word which keeps on going, right? When our economy is going up, the expansion is being taken place, right? What is the highest uh, point which is called as peak? Then there are certain situations when the economy is going down, which is called as contraction phase, and then we are at the uh, situation of the lowest point, which is called as trough. So, how business cycle takes place? What is the nature of business cycle? right and what is meant by these different phases. So, all these economic theories are being taken up for the consideration of micro as well as macroeconomics and then we apply this quantitative analysis to those situations, right, where we analyze the things uh, numerically as well as algebraically. We talk about optimization because this is something which is very important, right. We are talking about the optimal solution, we are talking about the optimal allocation of our resources to get the maximum out of it. Then we also have the statistical estimation as well as forecasting, right. And then we have certain principles in economics which are being named as discounting and time value of money, right. Time value of money as we all know, the value of money is decreasing day by day, 
right what money worth yesterday was more than the money worth today right so how are we going to apply this time value of money and how we are going to understand uh, this discounting principle for the better decision making because if we are considering money in a same form then our decisions will be wrong we need to apply this that uh, money value of money is decreasing day by day right so all these principle help us to make out the right solutions to the problem so managerial economics is taking help of this economic theory as well as this quantitative analysis to the business problem so that the solutions can be taken up and the better decisions making can be made in terms of quantity and quality of the products in terms of price of the product what should be the right price we should be keeping right how we are going to marketing uh, you know how how we are going to keep this marketing management how are we going to do this financial management human resource management as well as research and development in the organization so these are the different functions which we perform in the organization so all these uh, management can be done in a better way if you are applying economic theory as well as decision sciences which provides us the quantitative analysis to the business problem for the better solutions to it right now let us talk about the topic where we are going to discuss about scarcity right and because of the scarcity we need to have the optimum utilization of resources if we simply say about scarcity we can say that we can't have everything we want okay so it's not that we want this 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 and we can have everything of it no we can't have everything of it because there is a scarcity and to understand the simple concept of scarcity we can say that we have unlimited needs and wants and we have limited resources so the gap between these two situation is scarcity so if in a general terms we define scarcity is this means that the desire of goods and services exceed the productive resources and the productive resources are in the form of land labor capital right which are available to satisfy those resources so every society has limited resources so what we need to do is we need to use these limited resources in the manner to get the maximum satisfaction of it but we can't have everything of what we want so every society must determine how to best use its scarce productive resources to produce goods and services so how uh, we would be able to utilize them right so that maximum of goods and uh, services can be produced for the maximum satisfaction right now to understand this concept of scarcity better we have two type of scarcity one is called as relative scarcity and the other one is called as absolute scarcity now what is this relative scarcity as we know that we have uh, goods and services right which are available which are to us okay so if the demand of something not able to meet out the supply right then we have relative scarcity of it uh, demand and supply as we all know if something is there like natural resources are there like water right it uh, mineral mineral water is there right so we have mineral water but if the demand of mineral water increases and we are not able to increase the supply then we have a relative scarcity of it okay uh, like in the time of this covid as well right we have vaccination available to us but now everybody is demanding for the vaccination so all of a sudden the uh, production of vaccination cannot be increased in the manner so there is a relative scarcity to it whenever there is a kind of a comparison we made between the demand and supply we have this relative concept of scarcity whereas absolute scarcity uh, scarcity is the case where we cannot increase the supply like if i'll give you an example of time right we have 24 hours in a day so this is a example of absolute scarcity right we cannot increase this uh, time of a day right there will be 24 hours only we rather we, we can't decrease as well as we can't increase it so this is the example of absolute scarcity right so let us move to the concept of optimal utilization of resources this is something which is very important for you to understand right we have limited resources we have unlimited wants this you have already seen and this gives a situation of scarcity is a gap between the limited resources and the unlimited wants now what we are going to focus on we are going to focus on economizing problems right how are we going to economize these problems how we are going to apply this uh, situation 
where we would be able to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. So, there comes the situation of optimizing resources or utilizing them economically, right. So, what we can do with this? We have three things for which we can do is the very first is to economizing this problem, one is the economic growth. So, one solution with us is to improve the economic growth. The more growth will be there, better resources will be there, better technology will be there and you know better uh, satisfaction of goods and uh, better production of goods and services will also be there. So, to remove this uh, scarcity problem, what one thing which we can do is we can increase our production, right. We can increase the growth of the economy so that we can have more of goods and services, one thing which we can be doing. The thing, uh, second is we will talk about improve of uh, use of available resources later on. Let us first talk about, so this is also one way to economize this problem. If you reduce your waste, you will demand them less, then definitely supply will be there, right. So, when demand will be less, you will be reducing your less, uh, you know, reducing your wastages, you are demanding less, then supply will be there and things will be better, but this is difficult to do, right. Reducing your demand or reducing the waste is not that easy to do. And then the third option which is available to us is to improve the use of available resources, right. So, to improve the use of available resources, we have four things which, which we can do is productive efficiency, allocative efficiency, equity and full employment. Now, what is meant by productive efficiency? Productive efficiency means producing efficiently, right, where you are using those ways or those methods of production where you would be able to minimize the cost, right. Efficiently means using or producing things in a way where the cost will be lesser, right. So, you are optimizing your resources or improving the use of available resources in the manner where you are producing effectively, producing the goods with those techniques, with those methods where the cost will be minimum. Second is allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency is uh, the situation where you are allocating the resources in a better way, right. I will give you one example to make it more clear, right. Allocative efficiency means you are producing what has been required like steel. Steel is a resource, right. You can also make shoe, uh, you know, horses, uh, shoe, uh, horse shoe with that steel and you can also use that steel for the production of car. Now, what is more allocative? Definitely the production of car is, is being required, right, because people are demanding more of cars rather than horse shoes, right. So, we need to allocate these resources in those particular goods and services which are in demand like production of small cars or SUV, peoples are demanding more of SUVs these days. So, it would be better to use these resources for the production of SUVs, right. So, how are we going to allocate our resources into the different production of goods and services? We need to understand that, right. If we are allocating them in the production of those goods and services which are not in demand, then definitely we are wasting those resources, right. So, this is again very important, whatever the resources we are having, we have to allocate them efficiently, right. Then we have equity. Equity means providing equality, right. But providing equality does not mean that we provide income, uh, you know, same income to everybody. Definitely there will be a problem if you are providing same income to a doctor or to a, uh, you know, caretaker of that hospital or maybe their clinic. So, that would not possible, but that equality means we are providing them the equal opportunities, we are providing them uh, the equal resources in terms where they would be able to satisfy themselves, right. And then we talk about the full employment. Full employment is a situation where every person in the economy is being employed, right. We are utilizing our resources economically and when we are having full employment and when we are employing, uh, you know, people in the economy uh, with this employment, right. So, we would be able to enhance our resources and utilize them, right. So, this is one chart which help you to understand the concept of scarcity and optimum utilization of resources, where we have limited resources and unlimited wants, which gives you uh, the situation of scarcity, which, which is being considered to be as in scarcity and to economize this problem. We can have three things, one is to have the economic growth where we can increase the supply by you know 
producing more goods and services, we can reduce our wastages or we can reduce our demands, right? So, that we can meet out the demand and supply and there is a third way where we can improve the use of available resources. So, as to get the maximum out of it, right? So, first we have talked about productive efficiency where we are producing them in the manner where we would be utilizing those resources where the cost will be minimum and we can use them in a productive way. Allocative efficiency is the case where we are allocating our resources whatever it is in demand, right? Or we are using uh, those resources for the production of those goods and services which are in demand. Equity is basically providing the equal opportunities and equal resources to the economy so that each of them will be able to satisfy their needs and wants. And then we are talking about full employment where we are trying to uh, you know give the maximum growth to the economy by employing all the people of the economy, right. Now, let us summarize our uh, you know topic for today whatever we have studied in our lecture. If you look at uh, the topic uh, covered in this lecture, the very first point which we have talked about is economics. In this, sub, uh, in this lecture, we have talked about what economics is, what is uh, the use of studying this subject and as we have seen that economics is the study of social science, right. It studies the behavior of a people, how economy interact, right, interaction of firms and organization, how big business houses making decisions, how economic decisions are being taken up. So, this is one subject like I said is important for all of us because we have unlimited needs and wants and how we are going to satisfy our unlimited needs and wants with the available resources. So, this subject uh, will help you to understand. So, in this we have talked about the need and importance of economics. We have also talked about economic assumptions. In this we have discussed two points, one is your citrus parables and second is your rationality if you remember. Citrus parables uh, is means keeping other thing constant. And rationality is that where consumers and producers behave rationally analyzing their cost as well as benefit. Thereafter, we have talked about economic analysis where we have discussed about micro and macro analysis. How do we differentiate between positive and normative analysis? Positive is what is, what is there in fact, right that is positive. Normative is what ought to be, is normative. We have talked about short run and long run analysis. Short run is a period which is not enough for us to change to a new situation whereas, long run is a planning horizon and then we have talked about partial and general equilibrium analysis. Equilibrium is a state of balance whereas, in partial equilibrium analysis we understand the change of one policy in a single market only whereas, in general equilibrium study we study the impact of one policy into the different areas which, had, uh, which has been affected. Then in economic decision we have talked about uh, different questions like what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, are we using the resources economically, right, is the economy fully employed and the economy is growing or not, right. So, micro and macro level questions we have discussed here. Under this topic managerial economics we have talked about what managerial economics is all about how we are going to integrate the tools and techniques of economics into the management problem. So, as we would be able to make better decisions and we can do a better forward uh, planning, uh, you know. And then we have also seen the relationship of decision sciences with managerial economics. And lastly, in this lecture we have talked about the concept of scarcity, what is meant by scarcity and how we can have the optimal utilization of resources, so that we would be able to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. So, this is what we have covered in this lecture. These are the references which are being taken up for this lecture. I hope all of you have understood it well. Thank you all of you.